In this video I'm going to talk about six of the mistakes that I've made over the past six months of learning web development and what I would do differently if I was starting again. I've made a lot of mistakes, don't get me wrong, like too many to count, but I feel like these six are probably the most important ones. The first mistake, not finding a path or curriculum to follow. Web development is huge, there's honestly loads to learn and the first two to three months, I'll be honest, I think I probably wasted my time. I was jumping from PHP, React, SAS. I was doing all manner of things and I was only scratching the surface of each and every one of them. I wasn't really learning them that well. I would say learning PHP was probably my biggest mistake. I spent about a month learning it, following this video course, and Honestly, I can't remember how to write a single line of PHP. I've never used it since. So I learned that definitely at the wrong time. It will probably be useful in the future, but right now it wasn't. And React, I'm in two minds about learning React early on. I, I love React, I use it quite often now, but I should have learned vanilla JavaScript a bit more before really diving into React. Finding a curriculum can be difficult, but it's well worth spending a few hours or days researching with the internet, there's loads of options out there for learning web development and different curriculums. Two that I recommend is the Auden Project. Really, really glad that I've started following that now. It's got a great path that goes into loads of details, so make sure you check that out. The second free one that I recommend quite a lot is Free Code Camp. I think the HTML and CSS section is really good, but I would say the later sections probably don't have enough of an explanation for myself anyways. You can always look into boot camps if that's an option. They can be expensive, but they take you through the whole process. And some of them say they will get you a job at the end, which is also great. The second point is web design. Now, I have a daily battle with whether or not I should learn web design or not. I honestly don't really know the answer. I still battle with myself constantly, but it is something I'm going to learn in the next few weeks just to get a bit of a basic understanding of web design. Most importantly, I think it will help with my portfolio, making it stand out. If things are eye-catching, I think that helps to get a foot in the door. But this point really depends on what kind of job you're going for. If you know you're going to work for a company that has a design team, I would probably not put as much emphasis on it. But if you're unsure, it is always great to have a bit of knowledge about web design. The third point is learn terminology. I am a big advocate of learning by doing, and I love getting like hands-on to code and everything like that. I'll be honest, terminology took a back seat for me and it has hindered me a little bit. So my first interview back in February, that had a lot of technical questions and I, I was a little taken back by it, if I was honest. So learning terminology, I think is necessary, but maybe don't become totally dependent on it. You should be able to explain it in plain English as well. Plus, learning the terminology really helps when you're trying to Google a problem. If you know exactly what you're Googling about, it's a lot easier to get the right answer. The fourth mistake is I haven't found a group. So learning web development or learning anything, especially by yourself, is a lonely road. And having a small, tight-knit group, I think, would really make the learning process a lot easier. If possible, getting a mentor as well would be brilliant, but that can be a challenge in and of itself. Now, I'm still trying to find a really good group to join or create one, where I'm looking for about six to eight people, quite a tight-knit community where we can send what we've been making over to each other, ask for feedback, advice, whatever. I want to get that close kind of community built up, but trying to find a community would be something I would spend a bit of time on if I was doing these six months again. I've joined the Odin Project Discord, which is great. I'm probably not as active on there as I would like to be, but that's something I'm working on as well, trying to be a bit more involved with the community there. The fifth thing is to challenge myself more. There were times when I know I took it easy on myself. Now that's not a problem if they're few and far between, but I noticed I was doing it probably too regular for my own good. Really how anyone kind of learns is that they try something, they fail, they figure out why they failed, i.e. Google, 
and then they correct the errors. And that's really how people learn. And it's an iterative cycle. So you just keep failing and learning, failing and learning. When I did a project that was probably too easy for myself, I was robbing myself of that learning opportunity. And that's time I can't get back. So definitely in the future, or if I was doing this all again, try to challenge yourself. Now, you gotta be careful. You need to challenge yourself such that it's slightly above your current level, not drastically above your level. Because if you're trying to challenge yourself up here, you're gonna get a bit like, oh, okay, I can't do this. You might get a little bit down. You might stop learning. So it's gotta be just at the right level. A good resource for this is Front End Mentor. They've got different categories of difficulty levels, like novice, beginner, junior, whatever. Check that out, try and build those sites. Also, if you are following a good curriculum, it should be getting progressively harder anyways. And the last point on this list is to manage my time and be careful of burnout. Learning is difficult, there's no other way to put it, especially learning something like coding where you're really mentally engaged. It is surprising at how draining it is to do something so mental. And there was more than a few times within this past six months where I questioned whether or not I did the right thing, you know, learning web development, was it the right thing? And I think that was really the burnout talking. I love coding, I love learning, I love web development. I just gotta be careful about my time. For me personally, a sweet spot of learning web development full time is about five hours a day, not aim for 25 hours a week. And the reason I think I got to burn out a few times was because if you think about a normal job, that's 37 hours, 40 hours, something around that range. And when you compare that to 25 hours, you're thinking, that's not very good. So I kind of needed to kick that habit a little bit, which I feel like I've done it now. There's still the odd times where I'm like, I should push myself a little bit, but I'm getting better. Everyone is different though. So manage your time. It's going to be a trial and error, really. Try it, see how you feel. Do it for a couple of weeks, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever. See how your body reacts. I know if I if I can do more than five hours, I will. If I need to take a bit of a break, I won't do the five hours. I'll do a little bit less. Always remember that health comes first. Good health leads to being productive. Being productive leads to more learning. And those are the six things that I would do differently. I would find a good curriculum, learn a little bit of web design, learn terminology, find a group, challenge myself, and learn to take a rest. Let me know if you've struggled with any of these when you've been learning and what you've done to overcome these issues. It would help me and it would help anyone else reading your comment. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. I hope you all have a good day. I'll catch you later.